Hello, everybody. It's uh, great to see you. Thank you very much for joining us in the special edition of uh, our meetings here at SIAS, focusing tonight on ASTI Holdings. My name is Mark Laudy, and uh, in 20 minutes, you'll have your opportunity to ask questions of the requisitors, the uh, number of shareholders that are looking to uh, hold an EGM, an Extraordinary General Meeting, uh, just uh, in uh, the next week or so. Things are moving relatively rapidly on this front. Uh, you might have even seen the release of an annual report uh, earlier today. Um, we uh, aim to finish uh, promptly at 8 o'clock, so please make sure that you get your questions in. Uh, a few uh, additional points. One is uh, that there will be the chance to, to ask some questions. Of course, at SIAS, we're always interested in a civilised discussion. Uh, and also, um, as SIAS, of course, we don't take a view. We uh, facilitate this meeting, but we don't hold opinions one way or the other. So, on that note, I'm uh, pleased to just to recap briefly some of the, the most pertinent points on um, where we're currently at. So, 22nd of uh, August is the intended EGM date. 31st of August is the annual general meeting. Uh, for the EGM on the 22nd, uh, which incidentally is at Marina One West Tower, just uh, over from here, uh, scheduled to start at 10 a.m. And among the, uh, re the resolutions or proposed resolutions, there are 11 in all. Um, the main pertinent point for the EGM is uh, a call for the entire current board of the company to be removed uh, from uh, their office from that EGM. Um, as well as any additional directors who might be appointed since the 18th of July, in other words, a month uh, ago, up until the EGM. Uh, there are further resolutions to appoint the requisitioning members uh, to take over as, new, as the new board of directors. And you can see them seated here to my left to help us understand all the whys and wherefores and what all of this is about. Uh, Please give a warm hand to Mr. Eddie Ong to explain. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome, sir. Thank, thank you, Mark. Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, thanks for taking your time to attend this SIA dialogue organized by SIA. Before I begin, may I humbly request your all mobile phone and electronic device put on silent mode, please. As you are aware, shareholder Mr. Lim Chi San, Mr. To Ching Hai, Mr. Ng Kok Hen, and myself collectively hold not less than 10% of the company share had called for EGM of ASDI to pursue Section 177 of Company Act on 22nd of August 2023 at meeting room of 9th Street View, Marina 1, West Town. At the, at the EGM, we are proposing to seek shareholder approval to remove the following director with effect from the date of EGM. Dr. Kreng Sak, Mr. Charlie, Dr. Dr. Sri Moma Sopian, Mr. Anthony Lo, and Mr. Tira Chai. And remove any director of the company may be appointed between 18 July 2023 and until this, the date of the EGM. And we propose to appoint the following director. Myself, Ng Yu Nam, and Mr. So Pek King as the executive director of the company. And Mr. Raymond Lam, Mr. Chao Wai San, and Mr. Elwin Yap as the independent director of the company. I'm sure my fellow shareholders have questions about the EGM, which is why this dialogue 
was organised. And we hope to garner your support and your vote at the EGM. As a shareholder like me, I'm sure you feel disappointed and frustrated with the company. We have not met with the company management for two years and counting. So the EGM is long overdue. For those who have been faithfully following the company announcement, like me, you cannot find help but wonder what's going on with the company and how it come to this dismay stage. I do not have much information like you all. I only can read from whatever they announced from the Singnet or published from the Singnet. The more I read, the more I frustrated. The reason and the fact we call this EGM and the, the situation as follow. First, ASDI has failed to meet the SGX exit criteria of the was list requirement. Two, trading of ASDI share have been suspended since 5th of July and ASDI have failed to convey AGM for FY 2021 and FY 2022. Third, ASDI, the controlling shareholder, Dr. Michael Lo, also failed to comply the rules which require the company to provide fair and reasonable exit offer to the shareholder. Next, we invested in ASDI, but ASDI have been loss making from 2014 to 2021, except for 2018, where this, they disposed the subsidiary SDI Private Limited. But then, during this 2014 to 2021, the then Chief Executive Officer Dato Michael Lowe still drawing a huge salary, ranging from 1.2 million to 3.3 million, and 2018. He even draw 9.9 .9 million per annum. But again, after the pressure, the bonus was later revised to 2.2 million. But remember, we are still loss making. L last but not least, ASDI had announced many announcements, none of which have materialized. Me, same as all the shareholders, our interests are aligned and we have no confidence in the incumbent board and decide to call for EGM. Our objective to take over control of the company and provide long-serving, long-suffering shareholder an opportunity to vote for the chain of the company. We want to save the company. We believe has potential to succeed under the right management. Let me give you a brief introduction of the proposed director. Me and myself, you can call me Eddie. My name is Eddie Ng Yunang. I'm the managing director of iTrue Technology. I have 33 years of experience in semiconductor and electronic industry. Currently, my company is in passive component electro, uh, industry. I was the employee 
of ASTI, the subsidiary Microwave before. I know the company. If I will be appointed, I will resign from my company and full time oversee, oversee the ASTI. Mr. So Peking, James. He is a director of Vansonic since 1997. The company engaging in business of wholesaling of electronics products. And Mr. So, also a vice president of business development of ASTI from 2019 to 2021. And he was also engaged by ASDI as a business consultant. And he also a substantial shareholder of the company. I believe if you own the company, you have the heart with the company. Mr. Raymond Lam is a lawyer practicing in Nepal and also a COO of the Network Asia, a blue chip company in the region. Mr. Chao Wai San is a managing director of the consulting company, has over more than 25 years of experience and in the area of leading corporate structure, corporate advisory, and support engagement of all the commercial review, both in Singapore and overseas. Mr. Alvin Yap is a director of Huan Advisory Parameter, which is specialized in merger and acquisition advisory practice in Singapore. That we And as you can see, we are all based in Singapore and we are all Singaporean. We will be accountable to the shareholder, which is why I seek your support. And we will promptly act to stabilize the company if appointed. We will determine the business and the financial position of the entire group, streamline business function, Maximum cost op and operation efficiency, maintain organization discipline and integrity. At the same time, we will work toward ensuring compliances with all relevant law and regulation governing the company, including continued listing obligation and of the company and directive of XGX. The board and the operational management of ASDI, together with our professional advisor, we work with all credible in interest parties towards securing an asset offer for the shareholder as fast as we can. Thank you very much. I conclude my speech. Let me pass. I, uh, I know you all have a question. I'm, we are happy to answer them. And let me hand over to Mr. Mark to chair the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please give it a big hand. Thank you. OK, once again, we have a little bit of time to get your questions. Any immediate questions? Who wants to jump in? So. Under what condition you consider the 22nd August a successful EGM? Sorry, what is the question? Under what conditions will it be successful? Did you say? Under EGM, that means you can vote under what conditions? Would you also just tell us your name, sir? Oh, Jinsen. Jinsen. I think I have both the question and the The question is, under what condition? That EGM is successful. Uh, the, yeah, the EGM. The EGM, 
by all the shareholder, we call successful by the way of vote. If no, win one vote means win. In total number of proxies sent through email to prox uh, polling agent and attendance during the EGM. Uh, those both both for for and against. I see only based on that day. Based on the proxy sent through polling agent plus the attendance proxy attendance <coughs> during the EGM day. So depend on the vote on the day, lah. Yes. It, that I, I, I add on it, uh, including the proxy form sent via email or post to polling agent. Am I answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Just follow on to this question. Uh, assuming on the day, right? Because uh, the risk code has come up has come up enough to say that this is yet to see that it's of course, you have just in the rough that this is proper. So what will happen? On the day, Dr. Rizal, who is the major shareholder, is not attacked. We can presume that the outcome of the EGM is positive. But the is, would, on the day, the sponsor are there, the company secretary are there, and would it be, be a case like that? Uh, is uh, the existing board not handing over to the new board? And what will happen after that? Will this be challenged in court? Who, who is going to, to say that? Uh, because you say it's going to be valid. They are they claim that they, this is not. So what is going to happen? And, and assuming Dato himself is not at, uh, attending the EGM. So all that is present is, is going to vote for, for the new board. So what? Yeah. Okay, so let's have a response. Would you like to... Because, uh, what, in other words, what happens? Uh, the company claims that they are receiving the lawyer's advice and say that this is an insight. Mm. Yes, so and in other words, if they don't vacate, what happens then? Yeah. Um, as you know, um, Mr. Ng has already sought uh, legal advice. Um, the lawyers acting for the requisitioning shareholders are from Raja and Tan. Um, Raja and Tan has advised um, and, the, and the other shareholders that the notice and the calling of the EGM is valid. Um, assuming that proper procedure is carried out at the EGM, um, I would assume that it would be, and um, Raja and Tan would be in a position to advise the uh, the uh, Eddie and the requisitioning shareholders that a valid EGM has been carried out. And therefore, um, you know, we would have to take advice from Raja and Tan on what the appropriate next steps are. Um, if there is a challenge, um, then there would have to be an arbiter of you know who is right, right or wrong. Um, and you are right, one of the options could be a, the courts. Um, if they hold firm on their view that whatever EGM that was carried out properly under the, the proper sections of the Companies Act 177 is invalid, then they would have to show cause of why is it invalid. Because uh, all that gets was the company, the existing sponsor, there's no sponsor, it's a main board company. Oh, sorry. So, so in this case, it's, uh, who must be present inside the, 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 the new board and to make it valid? To, to, the, the, the quorum, I think you're talking about a quorum. Yes. Uh, I believe yeah. under the constitution, as long as there's two or more members, there will be a quorum. And um, uh, if you are asking whether any other specific individuals must be there, I, I, I don't think so. Um, but yeah. yes, I, I, and and yeah. thank you, sir. Um, I, I, yes, that's that's correct, and th that I think that's the difference between calling an EGM under Section One Seven Seven and One Seven Six. Um, Section One Seven Seven is the situation where the requisitioning shareholders are. Uh, 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 calling the EGM without the support of the current management. Mm -hmm. And you would envisage that situation happening if, you know, certain of the shareholders are dissatisfied with the current board and want a change. 
right? Um, so that provision in the Companies Act is um, for that kind of scenario. So it, the, the, the scenario you just described is, is something that uh, will happen, and I, I foresee that that's what's going to happen. Um, if there's going to be a challenge, um, our advice from our lawyers is that um, they, if, uh, based on the, in their opinion, it is valid. So you know, they have to show us why it's invalid and why, you know, I, I don't have the answers to you know what, why what's the basis for it. Uh, in my personal capacity, I, I've seen what uh, Raja and Tan's advice has been, and I don't personally disagree with them. So that's, that's my view. Thank you for the question. Yeah, just just to add to this, right, Marketing team, um, you know, I commented on this right on, on LinkedIn today because basically they were raising three issues, which is that whether it was sent to all members, and and you your reply was that you got the list of members from them and you sent it to all of them, and you have advertised. So in terms of the first objection, I'm not a lawyer, but I don't see that. Second thing we have tried our best, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we have taken all possible yeah, steps. Yeah. So the courts, right, if it does go to the court, the court will look at this kind of issue. Mm -hmm. right? Secondly, they say according to the Constitution, you have to send it to the auditor. And they say, they claim that you have not sent it to the auditor. But again, to me, right, if it comes to a situation like that, you can't be, the courts will have to decide whether that's substantive enough, even if they're not. The third one, to me, is just complete outlaw, which is they say that you are usurping the right of the board to convene each year, section one seventy seven each shareholders to the right. So I just don't see any value there. So so but it's right that they may not the from what we can see so far, you know, they probably will not accept <laughs> the decision and you may have to take a lot of steps. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Any others? Uh, well one of the arguments is that why not just wait until the AGM now scheduled for the uh, 31st. Um, maybe, maybe I just answer that. I, I Personally, I feel that um, they call the AGM after we did our EGM. So it could be a catalyst. Uh, our calling of the EGM could be a catalyst for them to call the AGM subsequently. Uh, if we have not done that, then maybe they would not have you know, been as quick. I, I'm speculating here. Uh, but whether we should, we you know, we started on this journey first, and if they jump onto the bandwagon, it's very difficult for us to say, hey, you know, we should, you know, now step away and let them go on ahead. So that, that's just what I think. Maybe Eddie has something to add. And I believe uh, we have started this journey. Uh, all of us have put in a lot of hard work. All the shareholder interests are aligned with me and all the Mr. James, so we want to push through this EGM. We need your support to attend the EGM to vote for for all the resolution. And we will deal with the post-EGM issue professionally, legally, and calmly. Just, okay, before you do, can I just, um, because if the AGM has now been called, irrespective of whether you prompted it or it has been in their works all the time, they might challenge the validity of your EGM, but they, if you now fronted up at the AGM and you know, voted in the same way, for example, voted against the uh, appointment of those directors and so on, then, well, they can't argue with the validity of the AGM. So irrespective of how the AGM came about, why not now just front up at the AGM and make your claims then? No, I'm a shareholder. Can I speak? Yeah. Can I just yeah. invite the panelists to speak first? There's a difference between AGM and EGM. So, we, why we call EGM? Because we have been waiting a long time for the AGM. We no longer have the patient to wait any more longer for the AGM. And we want to change the company and the board. And just, just to add one point, which is that um, the AGM specifically, the resolutions are for reappointment of certain directors. Um, so the, the, the resolutions are different. 
So we can't wait till the AGM to hold those. The, the, the resolutions are not identical. Right. Okay. So simply voting them off. Yeah, it's not going to achieve. Uh, even if you if the, the what we are uh, alluding to is that okay, you can just object to all the resolutions at AGM, right? It doesn't achieve the same objectives as the AGM. Understood. Prof. Mark. Yeah, so to the point, right? Because at the AGM, three directors are standing for re election based on rotation. One is standing for election because the person they haven't stood for re election before. There are five directors on the board. Only four of them at most will be voted off. That single director left who is the non executive chairman, he's not standing for re election. It's quite possible that after they all be removed, straight after they appoint, reappoint the director. Using the constitution, you could say that's not fair game. I've seen it happen. You, re you immediately reappoint the same directors, and to say, according to articles, you can a single member can appoint uh, the board, the directors to fill casual vacancies and so on. And the other thing is, to the point that Raymond made, right? You don't have resolutions to appoint new directors under the AGM, and they never gave the opportunity for the shareholders to propose resolutions to appoint. Directors, which if they had given sufficient notice, you could have proposed resolutions to add those. Yeah. Absolutely so, right. So, so if, if there were extra resolutions, yeah. right, yeah. it's a basically if it's going to be a yeah. um, either the five of us or the three of them or four of them, yeah. then okay, we can do it together. But it is there's no mention of us at all. So it's a very different result that we will get if we don't hold the EGM and we only have the AGM. Okay. Thank you. Additional questions. Mm -hmm. Added add, add to that, uh, any appointment under uh, the, the HGA directive to them, any appointment of the new director had to seek HGA approval prior to the appointment. Okay, any additional questions? Sir? Currently, I read Can I write your name, please? Um, Currently, I read somewhere that uh, there's ongoing discussion between the current board with uh, Tutor regarding uh, uh, buying over the company at a certain price. And uh, I, I want to know what is your opinion and what will be the impact if the current management is being voted. Well, very good question. Yes, we do. All of us, including myself, we read from the announcement from the company and we don't understand the announcement. There's no price, there's no date, there's no offer yet. They say they talk, they say they discuss. Nobody knows what is inside. Nobody's, nobody say price. No, they don't even give a long stop date or to me, I think to many of the shareholders, I don't, I don't see any content in the announcement. If the exit offer by the offerer are genuine, the new board and the new management open to discuss and negotiate with them. We do not stop any negotiation. On top of that, we are not only negotiating with uh, currently what they announced, probably we will also find all our way to find new potential offer. Well, um, one of their arguments uh, seems to be that uh, Kuntira Chai Lin Cha, uh, Lin Abanchong is a director of Capital Engineering Network, CEN. Removing him would put any bid at risk. What's your response? Uh, let me answer this question. I already answered this question when Louis Wong interviewed me from Len He Zapong. Because Mr. Tirajai is from CN. Maybe the, he's a part of the consortium announced uh, in the, this potential asset offer. If he's a director, it may the board of director very difficult because it's in IPT, interest party transaction. What if there is another asset offer? Should we discuss with him or not? 
Should we tell him or not? So he will put the board in a very difficult position. Not that we are not welcoming him, but then he will put the board in a very difficult position. Uh, the other uh, point about CEN is uh, it seems that uh, Dato Michael Lowe has actually already sold his shares to CEN, which has established at least what a price per share might look like. Um, any thoughts on uh, how you might negotiate a different exit offer, given that CEN seemingly has already bought Dr. Michael Lowe's shares? Let me clarify this point. Yes, they do have a deal, but this deal is not in heaven approved by XGX. So, it's not a final deal yet. So, I would not say what is the price, because this is not a final deal. This is not an approved deal. It seems a, a number of the valuation concerns, which it seems have also uh, delayed the filing of financial reports, is all associated with an lithium-ion battery unit named EOCell. Um, by some uh, estimates, it's valued at 350 million, although that's been disputed. Any uh, take that you have on what the value of the company actually is, that is the whole company, ASTI? Again, five of us are not in the box. We do not know what is inside the company, EOCell. We do not understand what is, what is the, the number, why they call 350 million. All we don't know. Until we go in and we find out, probably we have a better answer for all the shareholders. Just to add on to what Eddie said, it's, it's uh, not that we will determine what's the value. Uh, there's professional valuers to do that. Um, so we will appoint valuers. The company has said that there's a valuer appointed to do specifically that job, but uh, they have uh, not been able to disclose who this valuer is um, or the, the findings of this valuation. Uh, so we, we are as, in as much of a dark, in the dark, as all the other shareholders of what is the valuation of this, uh, this subsidiary that we have. I added to that, even uh, now they already appointed a second valuable, yet the second valuable unable to give a final valuation of EO cell. Uh, sorry, this uh, my side. I just want to add on that if you look at the annual report today, I think that part is uh, qualified by EY. Uh, the qualification is uh, quite long. I would invite uh, the shareholders to uh, take a look at the uh, audit opinion of Fen Sen Yang. Thanks. Okay. Um, I, if you allow me just to take one other shareholder's uh, comment, sir. Please go ahead. Let's assume that EVM is like an artificial crop, right? Or whatever the question is like, what is your objective? Is it to solicit the back uh, as it offer? Or do you intend, or you want to know if what they say will remain listed? Is there a, like, a likelihood or a recall with AGM for some reason that it remain listed? So what is the objective after the supposed easier The suspension of the ASDI have been directed from XGX. We do not have choice to be delisting de uh, de again. The only way is to find an exit offer for all the shareholders. The main objective. Okay. Why I ask is that because I'm sure Ajit is aware of what's happening. No, no. In the in the past years, in fact, Ajit at one time, as I recall, he listed, directed, he listed international cement. However, inter international come back and still remain today and is profitable today. There is such a company, is there? Yeah. Raymond, what takes question? Um, I, I, I I think we are looking at all available options once we, if we are appointed and we have control of the company. 
uh, it's while we know that what is the elephant in the room is that there is a this delisting notice, uh, we have to comply and, and also comply with all the other SGX uh, regulations and uh, notices of compliances that we have received. Uh, we will also look at other opportunities and if there is even a very remote chance of us being able to uh, relist right, and continue the listing, um, we will of course try. Um, but let me, you, you mentioned that a particular situation that, has, that the SGX have uh, allowed the company, notwithstanding the issuance of uh, the listing notice, to continue this. We will go and study that and let me know if, if there's an opportunity. We, yeah, if there's an opportunity for that, we definitely will, will you know, pursue it with all you know, diligence. Yeah. Prof Mark. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I think shareholders need to be carefully the companies about. If you look at the offer, right, you know, they basically, when they were created by SGX, they said that the offer, or potential offer, is willing to accept modified opinion for the FY 2021 financial statement, which they already have a modified opinion. But it's not willing to accept a modified opinion for FY 2022 financial statements. EY has left, they are now seeking to appoint other team as the auditor, the audit work hasn't commenced. Ask yourself this question. Are they even going to be able to meet that second condition? Because the off potential offer already said they're not going to offer, you know, a set of modified opinion for FI2022. They haven't even got the auditors in place at the moment to express the opinion of FI2022. And when is the deadline for the potential offer? They already got extension. It's very soon, right? Yes. Yeah, so you just look at it, I, I just don't see how they're going to meet the conditions of the potential offer unless they negotiate an extension again. You know, so to me, it seems like we should look at the potential offer. But that's not yeah. Any other questions at this time? Well, if, um, if the audit work is going to prevent the current management from getting an offer based on what uh, Prof. Mark just said, then presumably you're not going to have an easier time either. I mean, uh, let's say the EGM goes through and you are in fact appointed as directors uh, next Tuesday, then um, what will you be doing in the first uh, week of, of your appointment? Getting the auditor to actually do the books from previous year? Or what will be the first point of order? I think by the first day you walk into the company, Definitely, we will look into the company financial situation to give all the shareholders an answer. First. And all of the board of directors and the management will sit down what is the operational issue, where we can do, where we cannot do, and how we're going to do, and what we're going to do. I don't have a specific the, the, the job schedule, but that we have to look into the financial situation and immediately give all the shareholders the, the, the answer first. Why in this stage? Thank you. It is easier explained than done. Yeah. 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 Lawyer advised on this, and I, our legal counsel will provide us a proper procedure to execute this. I, I think it's uh, to be realistic uh, and practical about it. And I think you, uh, in a couple of days or weeks back, you probably have seen a similar situation uh, at one of the REITs uh, where it was done in a more professional manner, and um, there was a uh, you know, proper handover, transition period, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm not sure if this will be done in a similar manner. Uh, it takes two hands to clap. Uh, for us to be able to walk into the, to the management, right, uh, we need to be handed the keys. Yeah. Uh, we can't forcibly, you know, force them to give it to us. Um, you know, they have to be willing to do it, or they have to be direct to do it. Right? So we, we will have to find that... Um, you know, that, that instruction to them, and they have to listen and comply. And added to that, all the shareholders 
has come from long way. We, we call EGM during April, and we call EGM now. It will not stop us anytime soon. We will go all the way with legal advice, professionally, we will do, we will do it. 20 minutes till we wrap. Please, uh, once again, raise your hand if you have a question. Um, I do also want to just briefly ask about valuations and profits. Uh, the latest data from SGX, even though the stock is suspended, is that the market cap is just short of 10 million, total assets 105 million. What do you think the company is worth? Can I ask uh, someone in uh, account, accounting area to answer this question? Why, sir? Mark, I think you are trying to be mischievous by just telling me the assets value and not the net assets value. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 but, but I think, I think yeah, when we look at the uh, financials, right, there are certain uh, qualification, qualifications that have been uh, made by EY. Uh, there are things that we do have to go into the details before we can come back and tell you, okay, look, this is what we think. Uh, about the valuation of the company, uh, that sort of thing. But of course, uh, by the time, you know, as what uh, Eddie has mentioned, the whole focus, or one of the main focus, is to find an exit offer. For that, I mean, we ourselves must know what is the value, right? Otherwise, how are we going to negotiate on your behalf, right? I, I guess that is the, the, the point that we will have to get to, right? Uh, yeah. Enterprise value minus three million. Does that help you in your assessment? I, I, I guess uh, I'm not too uh, familiar with the volume of the shares at the point in time, right? Uh, so I guess with uh, what you have mentioned, uh, it is really dependent on the assets that the company has, which we will have to go into in more detail. Uh, let's look at profitability. Um, the company uh, seemingly suggests that actually, um, as at the most recent uh, numbers that they have to hand, that actually the company is doing well. Um, how well do you think it's doing, operationally? So we're talking about last year they making a profit, and uh, I think the latest announcement seems to show that they are making some losses. So, um, if you are trying to say that they have um, turnover, I'm not so certain. Yeah. I think to that, um, last year, if you talk about last year profitability, the whole, the global electronics or semiconductor industry are booming because of the China-US trade war. A lot of people shifted from China uh, and it, uh, China's China manufacturing plant to overseas. They increase production. They increase machinery. This is why a lot of electronic company they generate a lot of profit, including my company itself. I, I see double digit growth. So, but again, semiconductor, all you know is like a secret. So, I don't know this year. You've also indicated uh, during your presentation that you would uh, quit as managing director of your current company, which is called iTrue Technology. iTrue Technology. Uh, and that you would then take over the management, the day to day running of ASTI. Um, well, seeing that you're seemingly in allied businesses, are you looking to then make an offer? Uh, it looked like a similar business. In electronics, we have active component and passive component. Where active component, they do things themselves. Passive component, when you ask them to do things, they only they do things. It is totally different industry. But they do have similarity where they need to pack into the tech and real, where the subsidiary of ASDI Telfer is doing. So I do believe. I can complement the business, probably bringing the passive component to the company with my expertise and connection. 
Is that, in fact, a motivation for going through this? No. Because I'm running a profitable company, now I saw my going into this daily, daily, daily activities. So it's not a motivation, but we, we, we have the heart as all the shareholders are in line, our interests are in line. We, we want to find an exit offer for all the shareholders and, 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 and possible exit for everybody. If you're running, so just between us, if you're running a, such a successful business, um, what sparks your passion to take this up to such an extent? I realize that you own many shares in ASTI, but you, you seemingly are on, on, a, on a crusade to make this happen. Uh, as, as I explained before, I work in this company before, I have a sentimental value with this company. So actually, I, this company can be profitable. I know, I know the business and uh, I know the people and it can be profitable if with the right management not like 1.3, 8.8 million type of uh, bonuses. Um, and are there any other companies that you have um, that that in some way would, would benefit from this? I guess in other words, if the company was to say that you have your own uh, motivations uh, for, you know, for working so hard to make this change in management, is there anything else that you would concede where there might be additional plugins? At this point of time, uh, no, do not have. In a future point in time? In a future point in time, we will work with all the board members and all the shareholders to make this happen. Any other questions? Comments? I do have a question. Yes. We'll just wait for the news boards and music to finish. It's really helpful if you turn your mobile phone volume up really loudly. Tell them we'll call them back. Right, Prof Mark. Yeah, well, you know what? You know, I've been following this company for a while. I'm a very, 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 very small shareholder. So not like following many of you here. Like, because we follow the company. I mean, one of the issues you have flagged is the excessive dividend ratios, right? which is, to me, very clear. Uh, of course, without this debate, but I think it's very clear. And of course, the, the payment that was made, and which was then deferred as well. So the question I wanted to ask, right? In addition, I know many shareholders are kind of looking forward about potential exit offer, and of course you would also probably be looking for other, other options, right? But are you going to look at whether the directors in the past have discharged their duties and whether you would consider taking action against the directors if they have breached their duties? Because, you know, if they, if they have not fulfilled their duties, you know, are you prepared to do that for your board? Because I don't think you've said anything about that. You know, I can understand about going forward, but in a way, uh, that could well have been a of leakage for the company. Okay. To answer your question, simply put, I will. If they do, if I do find anything, and one of my agenda is to find something and to assure you and the rest of the shareholder it will be accountable. Right. Well, that would involve appointing somebody to do another audit, is that right? <laughs> the roads all seem to lead to the auditors. Uh, well, I, I guess usually he investigations into uh, whether directors have, uh, you know, breached their fiduciary duties uh, or acted in the best interest of the, the, the company uh, would have to be done, uh, you know, collectively by um, accountants, lawyers and a set of professionals. Um, it, it is too early for us to, to confirm, you know, whether we will, that's one of our, the reason why we have not said that because it's not a witch hunt, okay. First and foremost, the objective of holding this EGM is not to carry out a witch hunt, you know. 
uh, and that's very important, right? Um, and, and we have not put that, you know, in any kind of emphasis because of that. Uh, but of course, you know, once we go, once we have access to the records, um, we have lined up a couple of professionals that will assist us in determining whether there is any cause of actions that we need to pursue, and advise the company whether there's any cause of actions against specific individuals or, um, you know, companies, entities that we have a valid claim against. Of course, we again have to balance against uh, resources versus the uh, recoverability of these claims, right? Um, and we will have to make a decision based on that after you know discussions and, and advice from the, prof the, nest, the professionals that have carried out those investigations. Um, yeah, so so I, I hope that answers your question. Well, Mr. Omi, you seem fairly adamant that you want to find something. <laughs> I think my, I mean, all the shareholders want to know, not only me, right? We, we, we need this answer anyway, right? Okay, once again, final call for questions. Otherwise, Prof. Mark and I will just keep asking. Yeah, I've got no more questions. <laughs> really? Okay, that's unusual. Uh, <laughs> Okay, just a couple of uh, more questions. Like Mark, you prepare a lot of questions. Yes, look, I've got a lot of questions. Well, one of, one of them has to be, you know, how you see the company moving forward differently. Uh, ever since uh, the chief financial officer started acting in this role, Anthony Bo, uh, he's pointed out that he's actually taken quite a number of steps to turn the ship around. Uh, retrenchments, for example, along with uh, shifting to cheaper premises and so on. Um, concretely, what do you think needs to be done differently on the ground? I think, first of all, we need to comply with all the regulations. We do not want to breach the, the compliances anymore. We want, because as I say, all are Singaporean here. You can find me anytime. We have a shareholder group. You can talk to me anytime. Right? So those who are not in the group can always add my number. We can communicate. So, am I answer your question? Not really. But my question was, uh, what, uh, how would you run the operations differently? Because you're in the industry, you have a, a bird's eye view on, for example, are there any parts of the business that, uh, as the company said in its annual report just published today, uh, that are no longer part of the group or are not part of the, of the mix going forward? Would you sell any of the assets? Maybe can I answer this in Chinese? Uh, sure, I'll ask for <laughs> Maybe the, there's some translator. Uh, um, to me, running a business is quite, quite a simple one. Uh, in Chinese, we call Kai Yuan Jie Liu. If we cannot earn, we have to save. So if we, if we can earn, doesn't mean we have to spend. This is a very simple logic. Mark, maybe I can just add to that, right? I mean, you say that how things will be done differently. Yes, maybe uh, the management or the existing management has looked at some certain cost savings, etc. But I think we all know what's the big elephant in the room. I mean, a lot of this, uh, Prof and uh, Eddie has mentioned, remuneration seems to be one of the big elephant in the room. But uh, unless certain things may have to be done, uh, then, then there might be better ways to do to do things, right? So, of course, I think that could be things uh, that may have to be looked at in more detail. Okay. Um, five minutes left. Any uh, final questions? Now is your opportunity. Uh, one of the things that the company has done is uh, paid a dividend, and a fairly substantial one at that. Uh, do you have any opinions on that from an accounting perspective? Or, Mr. Ong, any more guidance in Chinese? If you don't start this, do you think you will get it? Maybe I would just say that if you look at the, just now you talk about the market cap, etc. As I said, I have not been following this company since right from 2014, thereabouts, right? But if you look at the market cap, I would assume that the drop in the market cap will be much more substantial than the dividends that they have paid. That's my assumption. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
Okay, this is my last call for questions before we wrap up. I think I have a word to the shareholder. Yeah, we have started this and also we triggered a lot of action from the company. They started to do this, they started to do that. So, thank you for all your effort and thank you for voting us. Be your speaker, to run the company for you and I want to tell all the shareholders, the company is belong to the shareholder, not a specific person or not a specific director. Your, you appoint us as a director. We deliver our job. We answer to you. Thank you. And if the uh, current management also wants to approach you and wants to sit down for a cup of tea with you, would you say yes? <laughs> I'm a friendly person. If they want to sit down with me with coffee, I always welcome. But they are talking about sensitive issues. Sorry, I'm not in the position to answer yet. Have they in fact invited you for a cup of tea? And they have not. They, uh, they don't invite me for coffee, but the then CEO, I have been communicated with the then CEO, Mike, Dr. Michael Lu, until he resigned from the company, I have been. I already stopped talking to him because I want. I do not want to breach any regulation. Yeah, I, I think the uh, uh, the announcements is quite clear that they have uh, alluded to the to requests for Eddie and any of his concert parties to have a conversation. Um, but I think, given the uh, the current state of affairs and the litigious nature of this matter. Uh, we have proposed for Eddie's lawyers to speak with the, com the company's lawyers directly. Uh, so the, the, the avenue is open. I mean, we're not closing that. I uh, just want to make sure that uh, you don't take a go away with the wrong idea. The, the option of communication is open through a lawyers. If they have uh, any concrete proposals or any um, matters they, want, they wish to raise to uh, the group of acquisition shareholders, they, can, they have a proper venue to do so. But if they choose not to do that and only want to speak to him privately in a, in a, in a, in a, in a small room, then um, maybe that's not the right way to do it. Thank you all for coming. It promises to be an exciting 15 days ahead, the next two weeks. Keep your eyes peeled on your inboxes. No, it's not 15 days away. It's 30 seconds. I know, your EGM is away just on the 22nd, but the AGM is on the 31st. In any case, thank you all for coming tonight. Please give a big hand to our panelists tonight.